Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to instrument a Postgres database with the Splunk Hotel Collector. Okay, so I have a Postgres database running in a Docker container on this Linux instance. And if I run Docker PS, we should be able to see that container. Now in my other terminal, I've connected to that Docker container and I've run psql uh, to connect to the database, and then I'm just listing uh, the tables that are in the database and what's in the table. And currently there's nothing in, in the table, it's just uh, one table in this database. What I'd like to do is instrument this database with the Splunk distribution of the Open Telemetry Collector and push metrics to Splunk Observability Cloud. That way I can monitor the key metrics of the database from Splunk Ali Cloud. In order to do this, I'm going to install the Splunk Hotel Collector on this Linux instance. And I'm going to use a feature called Auto Discovery. The Collector's Automatic Discovery and Configuration feature allows it to automatically detect various data sources that are running either on the host or in a Docker container or a Kubernetes cluster, and it will instrument those applications automatically. And Auto Discovery will work not only for your custom applications, but also for third-party applications like Postgres. The first thing that we'll need to do is install the Splunk Oto Collector on my Linux instance. To do that, I'm gonna to navigate to Splunk Ollie Cloud. And from the home page, I'm gonna select Data Management. And we're going to add a new integration. I'm going to select Deploy the Splunk Open Telemetry Collector and it will take me to a wizard that's going to automatically construct the necessary install command that I'm gonna to need to run on my Linux instance. I'm gonna select Next, and for the platform, I'm gonna select Linux. I'm going to leave the mode as Agent. I'll leave the environment blank as well. And in this video, I'm not going to cover a log collection, so I'll leave uh, this as no log collection. And then auto discovery is the critical section that we want to pay attention to. Uh, number one, uh, language runtimes for auto instrumentation is enabled. Um, in this particular case, that's not relevant for us, um, but I'll leave it checked anyway. And then the second one, supported third-party applications, this is the one that's uh, critical for us because Postgres is a supported third-party application. I'll leave these language runtimes also checked for auto instrumentation. And then I'll select my Splunk access token. And I'll select next. And on this page, it automatically constructs the correct uh, install command to install the Splunk Hotel collector using this uh, shell script. And what I want you to pay attention to is this option here that's passed in, this dash dash discovery option. This discovery option was added because on the previous page, we. Uh, selected to enable auto discovery. I'm going to copy this command to my clipboard and then I'm going to navigate back to my Linux box. I'm going to open up my other terminal and I'm going to simply paste in that command and then I'll hit enter. I'm just going to exit out of these kernel upgrade prompts. It asks about the kernel upgrade as well as restarting services several times during the installation. Again, I'm going to ignore them. Okay, and it looks like the Splunk Hotel Collector was successfully installed. Uh, I should be able to check the status of the Hotel Collector since it's a systemd service. And as you can see, the Splunk Open Telemetry Collector is running. And even though I'm running it in discovery mode, the Oto Collector has not yet fully instrumented the Postgres database. It may have identified that the Postgres database is running, but it's not actually pushing metrics uh, to Splunk Ali Cloud. And the reason for that is because the Oto Collector has to authenticate with the database. 
So once it authenticates, it will be able to instrument and send metrics to a Splunk Oli Cloud. That's not a requirement with all third-party applications, but some third-party applications will require authentication uh, in order for you to instrument them. So right now, the Otel collector is only pushing metrics uh, for this Linux host to Splunk Oli Cloud. And it's pushing the host metrics because uh, that's included and configured automatically with the default configuration that you receive from installing the Splunk Otel collector from uh, the install script. So I'm going to navigate to Splunk Oli Cloud. And in a new tab, I'll open up the home page. From here, I'll expand the sidebar and I'm going to select infrastructure. And I'll scroll down here under AWS and I'm going to select EC2. And if I expand these drop down lists, I should be able to see uh, my machine listed. I know that it's this one just because the instance ID matches. So if I look uh, back in VS Code, uh, the instance ID is matching what I see here in Splunk Ollie. As you can see, the host metrics are being pushed. And then also under EC2 instance dependencies, uh, it does recognize that Postgres is running on the host. I had already configured this um, Postgres service correctly and instrumented it. So I don't know if this is left over from that successful configuration or uh, this will still show up even without uh, configuring authentication to the Postgres database. But regardless, uh, for sure, once you uh, have successfully configured and instrumented the Postgres database, you will see it show up here uh, next to the host. And this is a hyperlink to the infrastructure page for that specific database. Since I know we're not actively sending Postgres metrics yet, I'm not going to uh, follow that hyperlink and I'm gonna navigate back to my Linux instance. And if you look at the logs of the Otel collector, you will be able to see um, what is missing from the discovery process and what's preventing it from pushing metrics to Splunk Ali. So I'm gonna query journal control for Postgres. So if I run journal control on the Splunk Otel collector service, I'm going to delete the follow option, and then I'm gonna pipe that to grep, and I'm going to grep for uh, Postgres. Now what you see in the last line of the logs here, it says that it partially discovered PostgreSQL using the Docker observer endpoint. So it recognized that there was a Postgres database running. However, it's not able to connect to it. Uh, and in the message here, uh, the error message, you can see it says, make sure the target database has SSL enabled or set insecure using this environment variable. So you can set this environment variable and then try running it again. Um, however, there is another way to set this uh, environment variable or set this uh, attribute value using a YAML config file. And not only do we want to set this to be insecure, but we also want to pass in the username and password for the Postgres database, which also can be passed in as environment variables, but I'm going to use a, a YAML configuration file to do that. The configuration file that I need to modify in order for the discovery process to correctly connect to the Postgres database and then push metrics to Ali Cloud is called Properties uh, Discovery YAML, and it's in the uh, Etsy Hotel Collector uh, directory. So let's open up that file and edit it. This small file essentially configures the discovery process with the properties needed, properties and values that are needed to connect to various uh, data sources such as PostgreSQL or MySQL. And these extensions here called observers are the processes that are actually uh, looking in certain environments for uh, services that are running, whether they're third-party applications or particular runtime language runtimes um, and they're targeting specific environments. So you'll notice there's an observer for Docker, uh, one specifically for hosts, so processes that are running on the host, and then one for Kubernetes. So this observer will um, observe for services that are running inside of Kubernetes.
And the one that activated and that you saw in the uh, logs of the Splunk Hotel Collector was the Docker Observer because I'm currently running uh, the Postgres database inside of a Docker container. So now what I need to do is add some configuration to the Postgres receiver in this file. I already have those changes drafted, so I'm going to copy them from here. And then I'll insert them here. Okay, so for the Postgres receiver, we are enabling it and then adding some configuration options. Specifically, we're adding username and password, and then we're setting TLS uh, to be insecure. Now for username and password, I've passed in the actual username and password values. That's of course not a good practice. You would want to like inject them using environment variables or um, you know, as secrets or something like that. For simplicity, I'm going to leave them as is, and then I'm gonna save this file. Now, anytime that we're making changes to the configuration files uh, that the Hotel Collector is using, we need to restart the Hotel Collector service. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So here I'm running system control, restart, and the Splunk Hotel Collector service. Now I'm going to run that journal control command and let's see if it successfully discovered the Postgres database. I know it's a little hard to parse, but if you look on this line, it says that the discovery process successfully discovered uh, Postgres using the Docker Observer endpoint. So at this point, I think that the metrics for the Postgres database are being pushed to uh, Ollie Cloud. And we should be able to verify that metrics are being pushed by navigating back to Ollie Cloud. From here, I can navigate directly to the database using this hyperlink, or I can navigate to the database uh, from the infrastructure page, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to scroll down and select data stores, and then I'll select Postgres databases. And from this page, we can see an aggregate view of metrics across all of the databases uh, that are instrumented in pushing metrics to uh, Splunk Ollie Cloud. So you can see here, we can get the number of tables, uh, top tables by database size, uh, the rate of rows updated, inserted, or deleted. And then if I scroll up, I can select a specific database instance. And on this page, I can get those same metrics, but for this specific database instance. So clearly I don't have a lot of data in this DB, um, but similar to uh, what we saw when accessing the EC2 instance, uh, you have this hyperlink to the host that this database is running on. And so when I click that hyperlink, it takes me to uh, the host of that Postgres database. The other thing that I want to highlight is database query performance in APM, which is something that we're not getting in this current configuration, but I still want to show what it looks like. I'm going to open up APM. And from here, I'm going to select service map. Notice that when I hover over the database, under the database name, it says inferred database. So this MySQL database is not itself instrumented uh, by the Hotel Collector, but the services, the backend services that are communicating with the database are instrumented. And so the metrics that you see on the right-hand side are showing up from traces and spans that are produced by these backend uh, services like the cart service. And I can get a lot of important metrics about the performance of the database, like the number of requests and errors, database latency. I can also get a query performance, so I can see top queries and uh, the 90th percentile uh, performance of those queries. And so I wanted to show not only the metrics that you get from automatic discovery uh, when instrumenting the database itself, but I also wanted to show the metrics that you get uh, when you have a backend service that's communicating with a database. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, 
We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.